Dragon Sigma 2 is an emergent gameplay simulator crossed with Japanese Skyrim on fantasy RPG crack. Oi, Anetta. Suini me same mash to me. We begin this epic not space fantasy adventure. Is this me? I'm the king by creating a hero that looks just like me. Yeah, there's my boy. There's my boy. Look at this boy. But then some handsome viewers said we look like a scuffed budget Kratos from Wish. Let's go budget Kratos. And I suffer from severe restartation when it comes to RPGs. So I recreated a mountain of meat so perfect and chiseled and glorious with an exposed brain so silky smooth that if it was a pickup line it would be sharing a bed at the nearest tavern with your wife right now. The big bird from the intro is dead so we immediately take off our shirt to assert dominance and jump into the brine to see if it's true that no one in this universe has ever learned to swim because all shoulder height water everywhere is filled with omnipresent eldritch horrors that consume all life. Well we may not be able to swim but we can schlong stomp goblins, do the Mike Tyson to goblins, steal entire goblins, you mind now bitch, punch the air near goblins, totally miss throwing goblins at goblins Best guard or dog. and do some sick jumpy kicks. Then I realized this game has physics. So we restarted once more and I made the same character that you did. A strong and powerful ultra barbarian viking lady with the biggest personalities possible and the proportions of someone who could win the strongman olympics but also breastfeed an entire orphanage because if I'm going to stare at my main character's cheeks for 100 hours as they run across an entire fantasy continent they might as well be thick. Plus I need a good thumbnail for this video. There's this mechanic of pawns in Dragon's Ligma 2 that I wasn't very familiar with, but basically players create a main pawn who will always fight by your side, but that other players can summon to join their party in their playthrough. They don't level up when adventuring with other players, but they do gain information on quests, chests and monster vulnerabilities you might not have experienced yet, and will share this knowledge with you often and loudly. There's a ladder here. We need a main pawn now and as you know I guess all good main pawns have a name so I decided to call this actual one-to-one -one recreation of myself me. I myself look forward to traveling alongside you and using my experiences beyond the rift to enrich your adventures. I'm not sure what increases the chances of your pawn getting chosen by other arisen, but we soon give pawn me some new pants that should hopefully make him more desirable. Please hire my pawn so pawn me pawn pawn can get over 1000 likes. Also don't forget to like and subscribe. Now before the real adventure begins, all we need to do is hire two more pawns from a selection of incredible and diverse player creations such as Fabulous Gandalf, Medieval John Wick, Fabulous Kratos, this guy called Maximum, Maximum what? No one knows, Slutty Little Archer in a corset, Another Kratos, Big Magic Titty Goth GF, Scuffed Pirate Gimli, Scuffed That Chick from The Witcher 3, Magic Walter White, Furry Pikachu, uh what the f***? Okay, this is actually getting uncomfortable. With our party fully assembled, we can totally immerse ourselves in this incredible fantasy world and embark on the most epic of not space fantasy adventures ever. Stop Chris? sitting on me. Are you all right? The timeless stories these vast lands shall elucidate are sure to be naught but epic. Oh fuck, he threw me into a tree. The NPCs we are to meet shall certainly be of the most compelling and gripping of natures. Should you wish to pick your foes off from afar? Ready thyself, foul tarnished, I mean arisen, for the hour is nigh to embark on our first legendary quest. We're running low on everything. We've had a hard time procuring goods, what with all the monsters. Mark us to gather what we need, but I've just. You want an errand for me? <laughs> You'll be paid, of Glad course. to hear it. Here, take this list of additional supplies. You ought to be somewhere north of here. Fuck it. Did you need something? This is from Sir Geoffrey, is it? He wants these as well, does he? 
I've got plenty to carry as Tis. Let's get. Tis not a matter for prying ears. That is the false arisen. That you are the true arisen then. The get. Mother won't allow it. Get. Just... There are still monsters about. Get. Do you worried me half to death? Get. The writing may not win the Nobel Prize in literature, but we're not going to let that dictate the direction of our epic not space fantasy adventure. So at the ripe young age of level 14, I'm sure we'll find a dungeon or a cave or something and forge our own destiny in this expansive new game. Oh my god! After getting brutally scalped by that chimera for longer than I'll ever admit, and then having to fight a white with our health reduced by two thirds. A cave. Shall we proceed into the depths? We must be prepared to make our own fight before we proceed. Understood. Dragon's Dilemma 2's resource mechanic of resting to maintain health against adventuring out in the wilds and doing combat becomes clear. So we set up camp and regain temporarily lost hit points by watching a 4K stock footage clip from a BBC Gordon Ramsay outdoor cooking show. Dragon's Llama 2 f***ing hates vegans, I guess. If you want to watch more 4K stock footage clips of different meats getting cooked, just utilize the game's high fidelity hunting mechanics that haven't graced gamers' monitors since Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> I soon realized that pawn me kind of sucks. That sounds most unpleasant. He cannot hit the broad side of a cyclops, so we turn him into a classic sword and board fighter to tank enemies while I miss them with my giant epic sword. He can also launch you up to high places to get epic loot. Please hire my pawn. You can change your class in Dragon's Trauma 2 at any time, which is pretty great. Play as a warrior when you want to kill everything in one cleave, or switch to a thief when you want to kill everything in 1000 cleaves. We're an archer now and I have no idea what the f I'm doing. Aside from a simple, fun and easily configurable class-based system, Dragon's Panorama 2 also lets you brutally murder all kinds of dangerous monsters. <laughs> Take in stunning vistas that your pawns will alert you of. An impressive view. We can infer much of the lay of the land from here. Endure real heartfelt loss. No, slutty elf archer. <laughs> Solve problems by throwing yourself at them. Ah. 
experience incredible attention to detail in the environment like spotting giant monster feces to better understand what's lurking nearby or you know just use your fucking ears deal with real time insubordination because even your fucking porn hates mining gathering materials makes for dull work indeed and climb all the way up the tallest building in the capital to not find a fucking seeker token. We eventually came across our first real dragon stogma too out in the wild. If only the NPCs weren't so long-winded, I would have some context for why I'm about to tear this majestic creature a new toll. Who knew that the murderous eldritch horrors omnipresent in all shoulder high water everywhere could be kind of OP. Overall Dragon's Pajama 2 has been ridiculously fun, addictive and really captures the feeling of going on an epic not space fantasy adventure. At some point I mistakenly bought or found a fairy stone that was actually a counterfeit and doesn't work as a fast travel token at all so I gifted it after dismissing a pawn. It feels good to know someone out there will feel the same disappointment I did. There's also a bit of satisfaction to be had after you find something then another player's pawn mentions their arisen totally missed it. Interesting. I shall have to inform my own master of this. The game is not without its issues however. The pointless DLC gives the title a terrible impression and really just shouldn't exist. Severe performance issues and crashes have plagued many players. A patch has dropped by the time of recording this video so hopefully it fixes some problems. And somewhere between level 20 and 30 the game just seemed to get a bit too easy which is a shame. The Chimera and the White fight we had while lost in the cave earlier with dwindling resources at level 14 and the first few dragon encounters after that were a lot of fun and quite challenging. And I hope that challenge is maintained as I progress further into the game. I even ditched my two extra pawns as we entered Batal to artificially increase the difficulty because this shit is starting to become easy mode for babies. Well, never mind, if I was specced into Warrior, that would have been easy as fuck. Thank you channel patrons and channel members for all your support. Your incredible generosity continues to blow me away. If you enjoy my content and are interested in supporting the channel beyond a like and a subscribe, check the links in the description. Consider the join button below and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash voidude. Your continued support genuinely helps me to continue producing these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around. Cheers.